important that we, we know God. Uh, like he says in chapter 1, verse, verse 3, uh, uh, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Uh, it's important that we, we know how to live. Yeah, God is the one who tells us that. Uh, it, it's important that we know what we're going to be facing. And that's one of the things he talks about in 2 Peter. Uh, there's some things coming up, some tough things. And uh, we need to know that. And it's, a, it's just a general message to, uh, or I should say, a general call to godliness and, and a warning against the false teachers and the, the difficulties to come. Uh, basically, he's telling us, like he does so many times, watch and pray. Watch and pray. Uh, life is not always easy, you know. Uh, sometimes it, it can be pretty tough. Let's, let's start in, in chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 2 through 10. We're going to read quite a bit tonight and just look at... Uh, uh, some of the things that we've looked at al already. Chapter 1, verse 2 says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind, and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, ye shall never fall. You saw as we read there, several times that word knowledge comes up. I noticed as I was reading, the word forgotten comes up too. Uh, you know, sometimes the hardest lesson to learn is the lesson you already learned. <laughs> You, you, you forgot, and you have to learn it again. But he's, one of the basic messages in this first chapter is, be the real thing. Have that real faith. Uh, he talks about it in verse 1. We, did, we didn't read verse 1. To them that have, obtained, that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, trust in Christ, it's a precious thing. Precious to, to, to be able to know the Lord, that, that God cares about us, that He's made a way for us to be saved. Uh, the Bible says there's one faith, one faith. Uh, trust the Lord. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he, he says in verse 5, add to your faith. Don't just stop with faith. <laughs> add to your faith. And, and he's, the first thing he mentions is virtue. And then to your virtue, knowledge. And, and he goes on a list of, I think it's eight different things there. Uh, don't, don't stop just getting saved and having faith. That's just the beginning. That's, we call, Jesus called that the new birth. You must be born again. You know, when a baby's born, you don't say, okay, that's it. <laughs> no, you hope not. You know, that's the beginning of a life. And that's the same with, with Christianity. It's like the little child who crying because he'd fallen out of bed. And the mom said, what, what happened? He said, well, I guess I just stayed too close to where I got in. <laughs> You know, there's a lot of Christians like that. They just stand too close to where they got in. Uh, keep going. And then he, he talks about being fruitful. In uh, verse 8, If these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, be fruitful. The Bible says in Matthew 7, By their fruits ye shall know them. Uh, if a person is having no Christian fruit... It may be because there's no life. Or it may be that they're, they're not a Christian. Uh, by their fruits, you shall know them. What product is coming out in your life? Is it godliness or is it ungodliness? Uh, is there an awareness of sin or is sin just a, a normal part? In Ephesians 2, you know the verse where he says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. We're saved to serve. We're saved to have a, a product in our life. Uh, we need to be the real thing uh, as Christians. And uh, God can help us to know that. Uh, we're saved unto good works. Be the real thing. The second uh, area is 
Believe the Bible. As you, as you look at, at 2 Peter, number one, be the real thing. Number two, believe the Bible. And he really goes into that in the second half of chapter one. Uh, he talks about his testimony in uh, uh, verse uh, 13. Yeah, I think it made as long as I am in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle. He's talking about his body. He's going to die. Even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me, moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. He's written it down. God inspired, inspired him, gave him the words that we could know uh, the testimony and the, the revealed word of God. Uh, we need to believe the Bible. Uh, th these guys told what they saw. <laughs> uh, verse 16, uh, he said, We've not followed cunningly devised fables. These aren't made up stories. When we may note unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Uh, they saw these things. And let me say, they were willing to die for the Lord Jesus. That's how strongly they believed it. They heard God speak from heaven and say, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, as he says there in verse 17. He says in verse 18, this voice which came from heaven, we heard when we were with him in the Holy Mount. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a testimony that God had them record so that we could know the truth. John wrote much the same when he said, that which was from the beginning, which we've heard, which we've looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. He says, that which we've seen and heard, declare we unto you. Uh, that's the message we have. Uh, it's the same with the Old Testament. We need to believe both the Old and New Testament. Uh, it's not two different Bibles. It's not a, what's it called when something is, you know, like an old computer? You know? uh, it's not obsolete or out of date. It's just the foundation for the rest of it. And uh, we believe uh, both the Old and the New Testament. And he says in verse 19, and this would refer both to the Old and New Testament, but particularly to the Old, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Uh, I've said this many times. This is not men's words about God. This is God's word to man. Now, God used men to write it, uh, but we need to believe the Bible. Now, there's those who want to destroy the Bible. They've tried to. Uh, they want to destroy our faith in God and, and in the Bible. But we need to be real, and we need to believe the Bible. Unbelief is a major problem. Uh, a person who decides they're not going to believe God's Word, uh, that puts them in, in a very precarious position. And the Bible even warns Christians. Uh, one of the warnings in Hebrews, let me read it. He says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Uh, we need to be careful, and I'll talk more about this in, in a moment, but it's real easy to move away from faith. And uh, we, we use the term backsliding, uh, it, and it's, it's an insidious thing. And he, he, he goes from there to believe the Bible to beware of false teachers. Those two go together. There's a reason they're right next to each other. False teachers are ones who they'll often take the Bible, but they'll, they'll teach it wrongly. Or, or they'll teach that it's not right. I heard one guy on the radio say, head of some, some church, I can't remember, uh, somebody asked him about part of the Bible, and he said, well, that's just wrong. <laughs> I thought, Whoa, wouldn't want to be you in the judgment. Uh, the Bible's not wrong. If you think the Bible's wrong, you, you need to find out where you're wrong. Uh, it's not you. It's, it's not God. It's, it's you. Uh, we need to beware of false teachers. In, in chapter 2, verse 1, he, he goes straight into it. There were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. 
And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Uh, this book and, and several of the books point out that one of the main reasons behind false teaching, uh, besides Satan's inspiration, is, is greed. Oftentimes, you, you, these false religions, man, they're big into the money. Some of the biggest corporations in the world, world are religions. <laughs> there was one guy who decided he'd start a religion. He saw, saw there was money in it. It's called Scientology. Uh, and they use our own greed and immorality and rebellion to draw us. You know, they use what we, the sins that we enjoy, to, to draw us away from the Lord. Uh, be careful. Uh, know what the Bible teaches. It's exactly what Satan did with Eve. She was looking at that tree and seeing it was good, and he said, God, God's keeping you from, oh, you, you'd really like that tree, and I can get it for you. <laughs> uh, Satan never has anything new. And uh, false religion uses that same thing. Oh, you really need that. That thing God says you can't have. It, I've heard people explain away what the Bible says and, and say it means exactly the opposite of what is plainly true. Uh, folks, don't be uh, pulled away by false teachers. And be prepared. Be prepared for scoffers. That's his next warning. Chapter 3, verse 3. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of His coming? Listen, if you're going to follow Jesus, if you're going to believe the Bible, there will be plenty of people who will be happy to give you a hard time. <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll just, there's people who just, that's their bread and butter. They enjoy it. God has a way of getting even with people like that. I've known some of them to get saved. <laughs> Paul was a guy like that. He loved going around giving Christians a hard time. God said, I'll get even with you. I'll make you a Christian. <laughs> and uh, you know, Paul had people followed him around giving him a hard time. Uh, be prepared for scoffers. If you decide to, to believe and obey the Bible, there will be people who will ridicule and, and punish you for it. They did to Jesus, didn't they? You, know, you read the Gospels. There were some incredibly unkind things they said to Jesus. Uh, it, it, let me just give you a couple. Matthew 9, verse 34, uh, I think that's the one where they, they said he was, he was of the devil. He cast out devils through the prince of the devils. They're saying he's, he's not who he says he is, he's of the devil. Uh, in Matthew eleven nineteen, 19, they said of him, well, he, he says what they said of him, uh, he's a glutton and a, a drunk, a wine-bibber, and a friend of publicans and sinners. That was the worst insult they could, they could throw at him. Uh, in John 8, 41, here's, uh, this is a rough, rough statement. They said to him, we be not born of fornication. Wow. You know, they were saying, you, you don't even know who your father really is. Um, Jesus had scoffers. Jesus had people who, who tormented him. And God warns us that this is going to happen. We shouldn't be surprised when God says something's going to happen, and it does. <laughs> And it happens to us. God's warnings are true. Don't change because of scoffers. And be careful you don't... You know, sometimes silence is golden. Sometimes silence is just yellow. <laughs> be careful you don't temper your statements just because you know someone will, will mock it. Now, people's attacks on our beliefs do help us to hone what we know is true. Sometimes we'll say something off the cuff and, and we'll, we'll think, oh... I'm not sure if that is actually true, because sometimes we'll have an opinion uh, that's not doctrine, that's, that's not God's word. So, be the real thing. Believe the Bible. Beware of false teachers. Be prepared for scoffers. These are some of the basic messages uh, that God has given us here in, in 2 Peter. And then he also encourages us to live in the light of the day of God. Now, that's just a long way of saying, live with the hope that Jesus is coming again. Keep Keep looking forward. Be expectant. <laughs> kind of a funny way to say it, but uh, we have joy and hope. In chapter 3, verse 12, he says, looking for and hasting under the coming of the day of God. We talked about that. You know, we're excited about it. We're, we're chomping at the bit for that to come. In uh, verse uh, uh, four, uh, 13, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. We're looking forward to Jesus coming again. Uh, we have joy and hope. 
Back in chapter 2, verse 9, he had said, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under the day of judgment to be punished. It's just saying, uh, you can trust the Lord to do right by everyone. Uh, if you decide to follow the Lord, he'll, he'll, he'll work that out. If you decide not to follow the Lord, he'll take care of that too. Uh, we can trust the Lord. And we live uh, in light of the fact that Jesus is coming again. And we have joy, we have hope because of that. But we're also motivated to warn others. Judgment is coming. Jesus is coming. And he, he then says, now watch out that you don't fall. In chapter 3, verse 14, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Now, verse 17, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware lest... Ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. There's a tendency uh, to slow down. I think that's probably a physical truth as well. You know, as something starts going, it, it's going to tend to stop. <laughs> um, and in our Christian life, we need to guard against the pattern of moving away from the Lord. Uh, we, he talked about this on the Wednesday nights. Uh, you know, it starts with unbelief. And unbelief leads to discontent. And you think, oh, God should do this for me. Why hasn't God done that for me? And discontent leads to anxiety and anger. And if we let it continue, it leads to despair. There's Christians who are just, you know, they're just in despair. And we don't need to be. And the world, listen, we live in a despairing world. It's a, you know, there's, there's many, many people who have to have something to make them happy. They can't just be happy. They can't just have the joy of the Lord. They've got to have a drug, or they've got to have an activity, or they've got to have a person, or you, know, you can plug in all kinds of things there. God describes this pattern in James chapter 1 and, and verse 12 and following. Guard against falling, he's telling us. In James chapter 1, verse 12, first the positive, he says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. <laughs> Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. It starts with unbelief. It starts with thinking, oh, what I desire is more important than what God says. Later on in verse 22 of James 1, he says, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Now, in Romans he says, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So to correlate those two, have you ever, parents, have you ever said to your kids, did you hear me? Now what do we mean? We don't mean, did you physically hear me? It means, are you going to do what I said? <laughs> and when God talks about us being, uh, faith comes by hearing, he's talking about real faith not only hears, but does the truth. If all we're doing is having it in our head and not doing it, that's not real faith. We're deceiving ourselves. There's lots of people. I meet people who know more about the Bible than me. But they deny the Lord. They hate God. The only reason they study the Bible is to try and confound Christians. Uh, you know, just hearing the Word of God, that's, that's not enough. We have to respond to it. We have to respond in faith. Guard against falling. Now, talking as, as Christians, we need to be careful that we're, we're given over to faith. You know, do the faithful thing. It all comes back to belief and faith. You know, really, why not believe God? God is more than enough. Whatever we're facing, God is more than enough. If you don't believe that, you need to change your thinking. You need to develop a Christian worldview. You know, the world is always throwing their view at us, aren't they? Billions of years, you know, all this stuff. You need to develop a Christian worldview. And that needs to, you need to look through those glasses whenever you're looking at life. 
You need to let the Lord guide you. We, we had a funny experience this week. We, we're, we have an exciting life right now. And uh, Alex was crying. I mean, she was really crying. Tears, screaming. And what had happened was, earlier, Katie had put an imaginary bandage on her finger. And Katie had taken that away. And her imaginary band-aid was gone. And she was heartbroken. <laughs> well, of course, we replaced it with another imaginary band-aid and all was well. Now, the reason I tell you that story is that's a lot like a lot of the distress you and I go through. I mean, really. Now, I know there's real problems, but you know, a lot of what we face, it's, it's just our imagination of what could happen and what could be and so on. You know, we need to get back to God's Word. We need to trust Him. We need to believe what He says uh, when He says, all things work together for good to them that love God. Well, I know that means everybody else and everything else, but it can't be this situation, Lord. <laughs> all things work together for good. Uh, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Uh, I'll never leave you or forsake you, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I shall not fear what man can do unto me. I mean, we have all the promises of God, don't we? And we live in unbelief many times. We need to believe God. Uh, guard against falling. You know, that's, that's one of the big messages of 2 Peter. Now, some of us are officially old now, and uh, one, of the, one of the things... Almost, yeah, another day or two. Uh, one of the things they tell you is, when you get old, quit rushing around. It, you know, it happens all the time. Old people stand up, and they like when they were young, you know, like 60. Uh, they, they're going to rush off to do something, and they lose their balance. They fall over, and, you know, whatever. You got to stand up and get your, you know, your composure. Then you head off, slowly and with dignity, you know? <laughs> We laugh at that, but what I'm saying is sometimes that something has to change. And if we're, if we're going to guard from falling, we can't just keep doing everything the same all the time. If we're having a problem, something's got to change. And we have to stop and think, well, what do I need to do to, to quit getting away from faith, to, to quit being in unbelief? Uh, you, you know, backsliding, we use that term pretty easily. It often starts with simple things. You're just missing church here and there, just excusing sin or, or not reading your Bible. Or, you know, just, a lot of times we think they're little things. Uh, but listen, it's important for us to obey the Lord. I, I mean, some things in life really are not as important as others. But it's the little foxes that spoil the vines, God says in, in the Bible. We need to be careful. If, if you'll do the little things, God will help you take care of the big things. Be faithful in that which is little, and God will give you uh, more responsibility. Uh, he's saying there in, in chapter 3, verse 14, Be diligent. Be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. Then, then the last thing, there in verse 18, he says, Keep growing. Keep growing. Don't feel like you've got to the place where you're it. <laughs> uh, Sometimes as, as you get further on in life, you feel like you know less than you, you knew. You know, when I, when I was 25, I knew everything. <laughs> you know, you, you, I don't mean that literally, but uh, as you go on in life, keep growing. Keep, keep reaching for, for the Lord. Keep looking for what Jesus has for you. Don't stop. Uh, for, for a child to grow, when you think about growth as a Christian, I think it's probably better to think about a child rather than a plant. Um, a child needs nourishment. You know, they can't live without food. I read in, God help us, there, there's some awful things in the news. I, I get where I hate to read it sometimes. Uh, there, there's people who literally will starve their children to death. You know, what, what an ungodly thing. God tells us as Christians uh, that we need to desire the sincere milk of the word that we may grow thereby. Listen, don't starve yourself. Get into God's Word. Do it regularly. Do it all uh, more than once a day. Do, you know, carry God's Word with you. Learn it. And, and then we need exercise. 
there's, they're finding that these modern kids, you know, they can hardly walk because they, all they do, they have these huge thumbs and, and tiny little legs, you know. Uh, they're, I'm being facetious now, but uh, there's still kids that, that play games, but uh, you know, for a child to grow, they need to exercise, don't they? They need to get out and, and do things. And that's the same for us. We need to serve the Lord. Uh, I, I want to encourage you, do something for the Lord that makes you a little bit fearful. You don't have to do it every day necessarily, but do something for God that just is a little bit beyond you. Don't just take the easy way. Uh, do some, something that pushes you. Now, I'm asking some of the men to, to preach in the next few months. Some of you have already told me no. That's all right. You're allowed to say no. But listen, don't say no without a pretty good reason. It doesn't have to be your calling. It doesn't have to be your gift. We're not expecting you to be the next pastor of the church next month or something like that. But do something that's just hard. Do something difficult. You know, we applaud people when they do it for the world. Man, they have practiced 10 hours a day for 20 years, and now they got third place in the Olympics. You know, <laughs> you know we say, wow, what, that's great. Well, listen, let's do something hard for God. Let's do something beyond us. Exercise. We need God's Word. We need exercise. Uh, listen, you should have heard my first sermon. Well, maybe you shouldn't have. Uh, you know, I mean, you got to start somewhere, don't you? Um, and then communications. Kids need communication. Again, God help us. They did an experiment some years ago, some ungodly country, where they, they, they isolated children. Listen, it just destroyed them. It just destroyed them. Uh, we need communication with, with our Lord, with each other. We need friendship with Jesus and with each other. Uh, in, in Hebrews chapter 10, he says, Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Listen, if you're going to provoke somebody, provoke them to love. He says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Uh, we need each other. We need other Christians. We need to disagree sometimes. Uh, you need me to be wrong. I need you to be wrong. And I need to be able to deal with that in a godly way. Uh, there's just all kinds of things that are involved with growing up. Now, uh, pardon me, you uh, only children, but... Uh, you know, it, it really helps growing up if you have brothers and sisters to knock off some of the rough edges. Uh, I, I don't know, you know, only children, they're, they're a little bit different, you know. They, they need to be thrown into the buffers of life, but uh, uh, they're all right. God, God help them. They're, they'll be okay. But, uh, you know, you need those things, and that's what happens as you're growing. You need that communication and that, uh, that adapting to others. Anyway, to grow in grace, we need to feed on Scripture. We need to obey and serve the Lord. We need to spend time in prayer. Uh, we need to be a part of a Bible-believing church. And the conclusion of all this, as he comes to the end there of Peter, is to God be the glory. Well, that's a good conclusion, isn't it? Uh, to Him be glory both now and forever. And that's what God wants from us. God wants us to glorify Him. Uh, Peter and Paul both were willing to glorify God by their life and by their death. Both of them died for the Lord. Uh, God wants us to know Him. Uh, we said one of the key words of this, this book is the word knowledge. God wants us to know Him. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. God wants us to know glory and virtue. In chapter 1, verse 3, through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue. He wants us to be fruitful. Add to your faith and, and keep keep adding all these different things, including knowledge. And he says, if these things be in you and abound, you won't be barren and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God wants us to grow. Uh, I want to encourage you this evening. Live for the glory of God. God is more than enough. And he can, he can satisfy your soul. Some of those songs we sang tonight were great, weren't they? You know, peace from the Lord. That's, that's what we want. Uh, Jesus said he doesn't give the same kind of peace the world gives. Uh, Satan always, always has a hook in his, uh, but God gives real peace, and uh, we can have that, and we can enjoy it. Let's go to the Lord in, in prayer this evening. Lord, bless us and help us as we uh, think about these truths tonight. Lord, help us to live them. Help us to be real. Uh, help us to honor your word, and, and Lord, to be careful, to be diligent that we, that we wouldn't backslide, but 
Uh, Lord, that we would make the, the changes, whatever they are, to, to follow you and to trust you. And Lord, that we keep growing and, and that we would uh, be a blessing to others. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for uh, the fellowship of believers. Thank you for our church. God, help us to grow. Help us to be uh, learning the lessons that you give us. Uh, thank you, Father, for this time tonight. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.